you could break this falsetta up in pieces. You could work on that little legato thing. You could work on arpeggios. You could work on a little bit of thumb. Okay? And then you could put it all together. So I keep on saying falsetta. So let me explain one more thing here that I think we're pretty much done. When I play a song like, I'll say I'm playing uh, a Bulerias. And it follows this, this pattern. Bulerias is the rhythm, okay? It's a, it's a specific rhythm. I guess like piano would be like tarantella or something, right? It's a rhythm. And so what happens, I play rhythm, and then I'll play a falsetta. Then I'll play rhythm, and then I'll play a falsetta. Then I'll play rhythm, play some more rhythm, do some chord changes, then I'll play a falsetta. And then maybe I'll do a close. Un cierre. Maybe I'll cierre. So when I play bulerias, or if I play solea, this is a solea, right? I basically have five or six falsettas, music ideas that start and finish, and I put them in this song. And I'll play a falsetta, play some rhythm. Play a falsetta, play a different part of the rhythm. I'll play a falsetta, different part of the rhythm, and then maybe I'll finish it. So when I'm playing, and let's say, for instance, the fingers aren't working. And I have some really hard falsetta that have some really easy ones. Guess what? When I'm playing solea, I'm playing the easy ones. Because I know I'm going to butcher it. If I'm feeling really good, and I'm Paco de Lucia on stage, guess what? I'm going to play all the hard stuff. But the cool thing is, I have the choice. I decide what I'm going to play. Versus classical music, the way it's written is the way you play it, right? You don't have liberties to change notes or to put this part first and that part second. With me, I have five falsettas. I could put this one here. I could put it here. I could put it here. I could put it wherever I want to put it. So when people say <coughs> flamenco, there's a lot of improvisation. There's improvisation. But these ideas that I play, they're the same ideas. They might have a couple notes here or that, or maybe I'll picado, or maybe I'll ligado instead. But I'm playing the same ideas. I'm not improvising a whole bullet idea. So, and then sometimes you get these jokers that say, they come up and they're playing, it's not very good. And they're like, yeah, it's all improvised. And my response is, it sounded improvised. It was garbage. It was horrible. <laughs> You sound like you just made it up, right? And so be careful for that. When somebody says, I'm a flamenco guitar player, it's like, what kind of flamenco guitar player are they? Because you listen to any of the big name people, your Vicente Amigos, Tomatito, Gerardo Nunez, Paco de Lucia, Cañesares, Chicola, any of those guys, you'll never, ever hear them make up a falsetta on stage in concert. They'll never do it. They have their ideas, they might change the order around, they might... You're playing for a singer, and you're feeling it, and all of a sudden you're like, you know, this falsetta is going to sound great here, and you just throw it in. And the next day he's playing for it, and it's like, maybe the mood's a little bit different, and he said, well, yesterday I played this one, but today I'm going to play this one. I'm improvising, I have choices, but I'm not making up stuff on stage. Tonight when I play, Everything there is in my head, but it's in pieces. And then when I'm playing, normally I have an outline. Normally I go from here to here to here to here to here. But sometimes it's like, man, I know I'm going to butcher it, and I don't want to butcher it. Or, I, if, or just the opposite. I'm feeling good. I'm on fire. Normally I wouldn't do this one, but let's do it. Or there's sometimes I have falsettas that are so difficult rhythmically that... I don't have good palmas and somebody really holding down the rhythm, I won't do it because I'm going to do something that's going to throw that. Remember we were clapping you started following me or I followed you? That's what happens. But if I got guys who are just solid and it's a drum machine and I can do whatever I want and they're going to keep in time, then I'll pull out these really wild and crazy falsettas that have these weird syncopations that end on a weird beat and that's what's really cool about flamenco. Okay? Classical guitar scares me to death. I love it. And I know tons of classical music, right? I grew up, you know, I love Albanese, I love Tarrega, I love Barrios, Agustin Barrios. I'm going to learn, uh, my next piece, I'm going to learn is Sevilla from Albanese. Beautiful piece, very difficult piece. What scares me 
is knowing the fact that if I perform it, I have to play it exactly the way it's written. I don't have any liberty. I can't change notes. I can't. Hey, I'm not feeling it like this section today. No, you have to play it. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like, hey, what I, I just didn't feel like playing it. I did flamenco style. Right? <laughs> you don't do that in classical. And that's what scares me about classical. But I've done it before. I've done classical guitar competitions. And you focus and you learn the pieces and you get them and you know you have to play that. Okay? But for me tonight, another nice thing is me playing the only guitar player. I drive the wheel. I do whatever I want. Right? In moderation. So if I get too crazy, shoes are going to start flying at me. Right? People are going to jump. The dancers will get mad. The singer will start hitting me. But when you're playing with another guitar player, you can't do wild and crazy things because then you can't follow. Right? I'm hoping David will come up at the end and then he could you know, at the fin de fiesta and then he could follow. And you'll see. I'll keep it vanilla. I'll keep it real simple and straight. And that way we could play off of each other. Right? But sometimes you get these guys who are just doing all these long, crazy things. It's like, what do, you, what do you expect me to do? It's, and then it's like, who can play louder? Who can play faster? And that's not music. Right? That becomes garbage. So, so anyhow, any questions? We went over a lot of stuff here today. Um, I know you guys are classical players, but I'm hoping just not to switch you guys over to flamenco players, but just give you a little bit of an insight what a different world is. Yeah. You have up there, you say you play some rhythm, and then you play something else like a solo. When you're playing that, are those 12 beat sections, each one, that you play 12 beats? Everything's 12. And then the next section? 12. So all you're doing is 12. just playing? 12. 12. 12. Everything's 12. 12. So you finish a complete thing. On 10. I finish on 10. <laughs> so you finish on the 10. And then Everything's in 12s, but I finish. Anytime I close in a 12 beat rhythm, like tonight when we're dancing, say for instance the dancer's doing her footwork, or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And the rhythms, 12s, the falsetta's 12s. So this falsetta right here, sol ya. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All 12s. Yeah? There's no eights, there's no sevens, eleven and a halfs, it's twelves. Okay? And that's tricky. That's very tricky because as Americans we don't really pay too much attention to that. So if, you, if and when you do learn a uh, flamenco piece, eh, just go out and play it, even if you're not in twelves. Nobody's good enough, but have fun with it, yeah? <laughs> but try to get it in twelves. But if you're not, still go out and play it. It'd be awesome. Yes? Um, you mentioned the, the new guy. Who, who do you think was the first new flamenco? Paco. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think what happens... Why? What, what did he do? Because Paco introduced the cajon. He had all these wild syncopations. He took jazz chords and, and put them in flamenco. He started improvising. Uh, yeah, he took a bullet is, and people are like, what is that? And it's like, it's bullet is. Hear it. Right? You count out. So for me, it was Paco, maybe Manolo Sanducar were the first ones. And there were some people in the middle. But for, for me, he was really the, the one guy. And now you listen to all the modern guys. Antonio Rey, I don't know if you heard of these guys. They're just monster players. Insane playing, and it all comes from Paco. Is that one of the reasons you picked the Lester the because of Paco? Uh, no. Lester and I were friends forever, and I've always played Condi myself. And you guys ever heard of Vicente Amigo? Have you ever heard of him? He's like the latest, greatest, probably one of the best. Probably the best now. Vicente came, and I got a chance to drive him to the concert, and then afterwards we went out and hung out. And Lester DeVoe, me, and Vicente were talking for like two or three hours, and Lester leaves, and Vicente says, best guitars I've ever played. He saw, he saw those, Reyes, and a couple other ones. He saw, it's an amazing guitar. So Lester lives in San Jose, or he's lived in San Jose. He lives in uh, Napomo. 
and uh, great maker. Anything goes wrong, I take it to them. And I take that guitar to Spain. People love it. They just they flip over that guitar. Do you play with Negras at all? Yeah, I used. My dad has a Negra, okay. and his is really good too. So this guitar, I played it. And you ever heard of Canisares? You know Canisares? He toured with Paco de Lucia. He played the guitar, and he didn't like it because one thing when you play a guitar flamenco, when I do this. One thing that drives me crazy is when I play here and then I get to the D string and all of a sudden it feels like a different guitar because the tension's higher. You ever notice that on guitars? It has to feel exactly the same. If I hit this string or this string, I want it to feel the same. But with my other, with the guitar, these strings were a certain feel and these were a different feel. So I, I did a concert and I wasn't playing and he said, why don't you play that? And I explained it to him. He says, bring it to me. So I bring it to him and he gives me a screwdriver and he says, go ahead, put it, put, it, put it in there. I'm like, dude, I can't, it's like putting my dog asleep, I can't do that. So he says, go ahead and leave, ripped it out and put a new uh, top, put a new top on it. And now this guitar is amazing, I love it. But the old top didn't work for me. So that's the kind of stuff Lester will do. He'll, he'll make sure you're happy with his guitars and he's a great maker. Is he the best? Who knows? There's a lot of good makers out there. That's the other thing is you young guys. Don't get caught up on that's that, that's the best, this is the best, this is that, he's the best player. He's the best. Don't care. It's like, it's a good instrument, he's a great player, he's a great player, but this who's the best thing is like, eh. Don't even think about music in those terms. I have a Reyes. It's a really good guitar. You guys familiar with Reyes guitars? Really nice guitar, expensive. But I play this one more. This one has a snap, and we could talk forever and ever. But anyhow, I just want to say thanks, guys. Hopefully, we'll see you tonight. If not, sometime around. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I teach at Javelin College, which is a junior college as well, and I teach Spanish and music there, so it's a lot of fun. If you ever around there, come by and say hi. Yeah.